Good morning, First United. Um, it is a pleasure to be joining you uh, for worship on this Sunday, the second Sunday of Advent, the day that we take a look at uh, peace and, and what that means. We're also going to talk a little bit today about when God speaks, and we're going to intertwine that into the Christmas story. So I'm so glad you could tune in with us today. Um, as you are aware, um, as a precautionary measure, um, we went ahead and closed church for today, which is Sunday, December the 6th. Um, no one has officially tested positive, so I want to make sure that that is clear and it's out there. We are just doing this as a precautionary measure. Um, the task force and I feel that safety must come first. And once again, I think I've said this before, we can worship God anywhere at any time. And so it is using technology as an example uh, that we can worship God and, and still be able to connect with God on that level. So we praise God for that. In terms of the future Sundays, the task force will be meeting next week at some point to decide how we want to progress forward. Um, we may not always have a permanent answer or something that's going to be consistent as this is a constantly evolving situation. So please be patient with the task force and myself um, as we you know, navigate through this pandemic that we've never had to do before. But most importantly, your safety, my safety, everyone's safety um, is important here. And so um, we just appreciate your patience throughout this. A couple other additional announcements uh, before I turn it over for our opening reflective uh, song or hymn. Um, we will not be having Holy Communion today since we are not congregating together. Um, I would like to wait till we do have that opportunity to come together for Holy Communion. It's just such a sacred time, um, an important piece, and I want to make sure that we have that opportunity to come together. So there will be no Holy Communion today. In addition, offerings and tithings, um, I would encourage you that if you are able to please continue to give to First United. Um, while we may not be open for worship, that does not stop bills from coming in. We are doing extremely well. Thank you to all of you who are supporting First United and uh, getting us back on track. We are doing very well. And I just want to motivate and encourage you to please continue to do so. Um, we do have other methods that you can give offering besides in person. You can drop them off at the church, put them in the slot. You can mail them in um, and you can even do the online giving. For questions about online giving, uh, you can message Chuck Marsh and he'll be happy to assist you with that. We want to thank those who are participating in the Angel Tree. Uh, donations are due um, at starting points by December the 11th. So once again, if you are participating in the Angel Tree program, your donations are due by December the 11th. We are still planning to have our Christmas Eve service on December the 24th at 8 p.m. Once again, that is the 24th at 8 p.m. We are not having two services. We are only having one, and it is by reservation only. This way we can make sure... Uh, we do not max out, and we know who is coming and going, kind of a way to, to, to trace, basically, who's been at first united in the building and who hasn't been. If for some reason Christmas Eve service changes, of course, the task force and I will let everyone know. But right now, we are still planning to continue to move forward. So if you are interested in attending the Christmas Eve service, uh, please call the office Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and speak to our office manager, Karen Ingram, and she'll be happy to put you on the list uh, for attendance. We are still continuing to have Bible study as well through Zoom. It takes place Mondays at 630, so I hope that you can join us tomorrow. Uh, we will get that link posted up again. If you missed last week's Bible study, that is up on uh, the Facebook page, the First United Facebook page. If for some reason I become ill, for whatever reason that is, um, and I do need to cancel, please know that I will record something at a later time and make up uh, for the information there that may not be presented. But right now we are planning to meet since I do feel fine. I do believe that is all the announcements that I have. Um, so if you will take this time now to prepare your hearts 
in your minds for worship. And it is now time for our opening reflective hymn. Will you please join with me now in our call to worship? Listen, all people. The voice of God calls out across the ages. We hear and respond. We rise up to worship God from the valleys, the mountains, and the plains. Like a shepherd, God leads us and tenderly gathers us together. Comfort, comfort, O oh my people, says our God of love. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord stands forever. Amen. Will you please join with me and bow our heads for opening prayer. Good morning, Father. Our excitement and joy continues to build during this season of Advent. We want to be filled with your Holy Spirit today and every day with hope, peace, joy, and love in preparation for the celebration of the birth of your Son, the Savior of the world. Even in our current world that is filled with uncertainty, we know that you are indeed certain and are never changing, and your love endures forever. We need to know that now more than ever. And also let us remember the reason for this Advent season. While we enjoy the buying of gifts and sharing of baked goods and times of fellowship, we don't want to lose the true meaning and excitement of the season. And we don't want to let that busyness change the joy that we should be feeling inside. Father God, let us know and sense your presence here with us today as we listen to these reflective hymns and songs, hear your holy scriptures and message for us and join together for a time of fellowship through technology. We pray all these things in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, we will now proceed with the lighting of the Advent candle. Powerful 
nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus As we come time now for our sharing of joys and concerns, first, I just want you to take a moment to reflect for your life and where have you seen God at work and rejoice in those moments, even if they're small. They might seem small to us, but they are large to him. Take a moment to celebrate those moments. And one of the many joys that we all share is that we are in this Advent season and preparing and celebrating the birth of the Savior of the world. So let us rejoice in that. I do have a few concerns here that I want to lift before you today. Um, first and foremost, let us continue to remember the families that have lost loved ones recently and just families in general because it's a holiday season um, and it can be very challenging for families to to celebrate when they're missing someone they love. And so we want to make sure we remember all families who are missing someone dear to them um, this Christmas season. If you will continue to remember my grandmother, Martha Ryder, in your prayers, uh, she's currently in the hospital. Um, her legs just are not strong enough to support her. She's in a lot of pain at the moment. Uh, so if you can keep her in your prayers. If you'll also continue to pray for my wife as well for healing and for her continued recovery, uh, the prayers are working. And so I praise God for all of you and, and your prayers for that. Linda Martin has asked for some specific prayers. Uh, she's asked uh, for some prayers for her relatives, um, Arnie Wills and his wife. Uh, they are currently in the hospital uh, with COVID, and um, we want to make sure we pray for them and their healing. That is a very serious matter. Uh, Leslie Neal has asked uh, for some prayers uh, for her aunt, Lorraine Ellis. Uh, we pray for healing and comfort for her. Also, Polly Arnold is asking prayers for her daughter, Gina Wood. Um, Gina's having surgery on December the 8th this week, um, and that's as a result of a biopsy that's been done on her thyroid and the tests that came back were positive uh, for cancer. And so we wanna remember Gina as well. We also wanna remember all those individuals on our prayer list, as well as those who may not be or shut-ins, uh, those that we may not realize need prayer. Um, I always live in a world where I always need prayer. So let's just pray as often as we can and pray for as many people as we can. So now will you bow your heads? Uh, for a moment of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this chance to gather here virtually. First and foremost, Lord God, we praise you and thank you for this Advent season and for the joys uh, that we have and experience. And even though the world may seem like it's in chaos, you are not chaotic. And we stop to reflect on just how much you are taking care of us and providing us the safety that we need. Father God, we want to lift up all the families that um, have currently lost loved ones and just any family who is missing someone dear to their hearts this season. For we know that it's hard when families gather and, and they're missing loved ones. And so watch out for all these families, especially during this Christmas time. We pray for Martha Ryder today, Father God, that you will relieve her pain and provide her healing. We continue prayers for Tiffany and her continued uh, recovery and healing. We also pray for Arnie Wills and his wife uh, for their recovery from COVID. We pray for Lorraine Ellis for healing and comfort. And we also pray for Gina Wood for her upcoming surgery on the 8th. We pray for the doctors and the nurses that are mending to her care. Father God, we also lift up any unspoken requests that we have, Lord God, that just because they're not said, it doesn't mean you do not know their needs or concerns. And so, Lord God, hear those needs and concerns this morning. And Father God, we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray and say, 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, our scripture passage comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. Hear these words. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom he favors. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this morning, I want to begin by talking with you a little bit about where my devotionals, you know, took me this week and kind of what I was thinking about. I want to share this quick story and sermon illustration with you. Before refrigerators, people used ice houses to preserve their food. Many of you know this. Ice houses had thick walls, no windows, and and a tightly fitted door. In winter, when streams and lakes were frozen, large blocks of ice were cut, hauled to the ice houses, and covered with sawdust. Often the ice would last well into the summer. One time a man lost a valuable watch while working at this ice house or working at an ice house. He searched diligently for it, carefully raking through the sawdust, trying to find it, but but he couldn't. His fellow workers also looked, but their efforts too proved rather pointless. They couldn't find it either. Until one day, a small boy who heard about the the fruitless search slipped into the ice house during the noon hour and soon emerged with the watch that they were looking for. Amazed, the men asked how he found it. The boy replied, I closed the door, lay down in the sawdust, and kept very still. Soon, I heard the watch ticking, and that is how he found the watch. He laid still and he listened. It is this story that started my devotions this week and really got me thinking about God and how God speaks to us, but we also have to be ready to listen. I mean, think about this with me. How often does God speak to us, but we're guilty of missing it? How often does God speak to us, but we only hear it when we're still enough to hear his voice? And even then, how often do we wait for God to speak, and yet sometimes we feel that he never does? Can you relate to any of those? I know I can. These questions I often reflect during this season. As I read the Christmas story, and I often wonder those very same questions. How much do we listen? How often does God speak up at the right time? Do we miss it sometimes? Are we still enough to hear his voice? That is the shepherd 
and the angel in Luke chapter 2. See, in our scripture passage this morning, we read about an angel of the Lord coming, right? It says in verse 9, Then an angel of the Lord stood before them. So this angel comes and he tells the shepherd, or the shepherds, that good news is here, and the Savior has been born. But why now? Why this very moment? And why did it take so long for the Savior of the world to be born? Sin's been in the world for a very long time, but why now? And then another question is, why the shepherds of all people? The first thing we have to remember is that God is eternal. And time to him is far different than what we know and see. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8 states that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. We also have to understand that God never does anything too soon or too late. And he also never does anything by chance. He has a perfect order and timing for everything. We may not always see it that way because we humans don't always understand his methods. And I get that can be frustrating, but we have to have put our trust and our faith that God knows what he's doing. Plus, remember, God sees the bigger picture. God sees it all, including small and large parts that can make a difference in the outcome. But now concerning the birth of Christ, perhaps the most significant passage to answer the question of why now and not earlier comes from Galatians chapter 4 through 5, which states, But when the fullness of time has come, God sent forth his Son, made a woman, made under the law to redeem them, that under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Notice the passage says, the fullness of time. The fullness of time, what does that mean? It means that God sent Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, when he had everything ready. Well, pastor, sin's been in the world. Things should be ready. No, 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 no. We don't see the bigger picture, and we have to trust that God sees the bigger picture. That is why Jesus is here now. Another thing we have to understand is a historical part of this that we can learn from reading the Old Testament. See, the Jews had a, had a sufficient time to prove that they could keep the law perfectly. They had ample time to prove that. But Israel failed miserably. And as they failed, it just proved more and more that they needed a Savior. God knew how long it would take to give mankind the object lesson that he wanted them to have concerning the reality of man's difficulty and his delivery. The time was right because prophecy was fulfilled to a T. It fit Daniel's 483 years um, after the order of Cyrus to rebuild Jerusalem, Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. It fit perfectly, that prophecy. It also fit the foretelling of many other prophets. Micah, for example, prophesied the town in which Jesus would be born, Micah chapter 5, verse 2. It also fit the perfect genealogy. Coming together were two select individuals, Mary and Joseph, traced the genealogies in both Matthew 1 and Luke chapter 3 to see the beauty of God's wonderful design in that genealogy. How can anyone today fail to appreciate that it was the right time? It is the right time. God had all this planned out. We also have to remember how God knew and orchestrated the historical setting so that it was perfect too. At the time of Christ's birth, the known world was experiencing peace and stability. That part is certainly true. If you look at the world and some of the politics, I mean, Favorable means of travel were available and a common language existed, which was Greek. Society at the time was amazingly cosmopolitan, making for a quick spread of the gospel. Prosperity was common, but here's the problem. The religious world was bankrupt. 
unable to meet the spiritual needs of the people. Ritualism, superstition, and corruption on the religious scene favored the debut of the Lord Jesus Christ into the world. Once again, God's perfect timing. So the first thing we need to do is rejoice during this Advent season and recognize his control over all things, as well as his goodness and grace to provide us his son, John 3.16, for God so loved the world. Also, we have to remember that the Advent season, part of this is not just celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, but remembering that there is a second coming. We've got to remember that while we look around and say, Jesus, come on, what are you waiting on? The world's terrible. God sees the whole picture. So we've got to trust that God sees that whole picture and he knows the perfect timing for Jesus' second coming. But even knowing all this, let's specifically look at these scripture verses. We get the shepherds and the angel entering into the Christmas story. We clearly know why the angel was there, right? Just tell the good news, which we're going to talk about here in a few minutes. But why the shepherds? I mean, come on, people. We're going to have a story here, and you're going to put in shepherds? Why? There is huge significance in these shepherds. See, at that time, sheep farmers were generally seen as having a low or little value by other people. I mean, the type of sheep the shepherds would have and would have been raising were what they call fat-tailed sheep or broad-tailed sheep. They often had lambs in the autumn and winter rather than in the spring, which most sheep in the Western country these days would have had in the spring. But in this time period, you're looking at fall and winter. The shepherds represent a group of people that to some might be considered the farthest away from God. If you're looking at Jewish law, that's most likely true as well. But see, God is proving by using the shepherds that no one is out of reach to being saved, that Jesus Christ came for all people, yes, including the lowliest of low, including the shepherds. And knowing all of that, what does this mean for us during the Advent season in the year 2020? I mean, we can learn from Luke chapter 2 and the shepherds and the angel that along with knowing and understanding God's perfect time for speaking and acting, that there are key lessons here. It's not just a story. It's a life lesson. It's a spiritual journey. It's part of our biblical ancestry. So there are three points I want to make sure I go over with you today concerning this particular passage. I just want to make sure I highlight them to you uh, during this Advent season. And my, my goal is for you to take this information, go back and read the passage again, um, and then kind of study and, and pray over it as well. So the first takeaway I want to go over with you is this. When God speaks at the right time, might I add, we are to not be afraid. This is based on verse 10, where the angel says what? Do not be afraid. I mean, that's plain as day. Now, in the shepherd's defense, it would seem reasonable to be afraid, and especially if the angel's coming to you. I mean, that would be a little odd. I mean, if I'm walking down from the parsonage to the church building on Christmas Eve and suddenly an angel stops me, I'm probably going to be afraid. I'm also going to probably go get a CAT scan in the morning because I'm going to be a little concerned about what I'm seeing. I'm going to be a little afraid. But why? Because it's not something I normally see or experience. So we have to understand that in the shepherd's defense, it's probably reasonable that they would be a little afraid. But we also need to realize that what is said, do not be afraid, is there for a specific reason. Because God wanted to remind the shepherds, and he wants to remind us, that Jesus being born is good news. And it's not something that we are to be scared of. But rather, we are to embrace and to accept and to be joyful that the prophecy has indeed been fulfilled. That's a celebration. God speaking and communicating is not anything new in our scriptures as well. You know, God spoke in Exodus chapter 20. 
What did we get as a result of God speaking? We get the Ten Commandments. God spoke to Ezekiel, the prophet. He even spoke to Adam and Eve. I mean, those are just a few examples. So God speaking is nothing new. But what is unusual is that it happened to the shepherds on a regular old night that they were keeping watch. That's what makes this unusual. And yet they were to not be afraid. And we are not to be afraid. When God speaks, whether it is through angels or through another person, we are to listen carefully to what God is saying. And we are to embrace it. God is telling us something for our best interest. And that brings me to point number two. When God speaks, it is always for our best interest. This is also based on verse 10. What does the angel say? I am bringing you good news of great joy. Jesus being born, of course, is great joy and it's good news. And despite our current circumstances in 2020, we got to remember the good news and the great joy that was experienced in this story because we are to be sharing that same joy today, regardless of what's going on in the world around us. Their excitement is also our excitement. And God always has our best interest at heart, which is why it was stressed, I am bringing good news of great joy. In other words, I am fulfilling the prophecy. I am saving the world by sending my son. And now you get a chance to rejoice. Yes, even the lowliest of lowly shepherds, you get an opportunity to rejoice. Yes, even you, the poorest and poorest of person, Yes, you, the handicapped or the disabled. Yes, you, the emotionally confused and struggling. Yes, you, wherever you fit into that sequence. God has everyone's best interest at heart. And yes, us, a fearful people of catching a terrible disease. God has our best interest at heart. I also think it's important to remember because sometimes we don't always recognize that God has our best interests at heart. We might see God working as confusing or maybe God doesn't really understand what we need. But folks, if anyone knows what we need, it is God. I can promise you that. And we may not fully understand his ways or his methods. Example, the year 2020. That's definitely not how I would pan out my year to be. But I need to, and we need to have the trust that he knows what is best for us. Right now, one of the best things we can do is pray and trust and obey God. And with everything going on in the world, God still wants us to remember that he is in control and he knows what is best for us. And the last point I want to discuss with you is this. When God speaks, there are signs. Once again, when God speaks, there are signs. This is based on the part of the passage where the angel said, this will be a sign for you. We need to constantly keep our eyes open and our ears open for God providing us signs. He is here. He's never left. He was there in this amazing Christmas story. And that amazing Christmas night telling the shepherds through the angel that the Savior of the world is being born. And he's here now telling us the same message, but do we see him? Are you open to seeing him? Do we see God's signs? Do we hear the angel speaking to us now about the good news? And we can't blame God for not providing signs. He is, but we have to pray and search for them. God is here just like he was in that Christmas story that night but we've got to look for him. We may not always get an angel with a multitude of heavenly hosts that say glory to God in the highest. We may not always get something like that, but I can promise you every sign we get, we should be praising God and saying glory to God in the highest. Now, trust me, I know it's hard in the midst of our busy lives to look for God. Trust me, I get it. I do. I'm with you. 
we get going with the hustle and bustle of life. We get going with work. We get going with paying bills. We get going with anxiety and worrying about this and that. We get going with this and that. And that list just goes on and on. I know you can relate to me. I know you understand. But what we all have to remember is that in everything that we do, we are to think of Christ and the power of this testimony of faith. At the root of the Christmas story is John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. So don't give up. Don't give up on the world. Don't give up on each other. I know I want to give up on the world too. The world is not looking very good. It's full of sin. People seem to be getting worse and worse. But why am I telling you not to give up on the world? Because God didn't give up on the world. And God didn't give up on us. It doesn't say God gave up. It says God loved the world. Folks, that is the power of the season. That's why we're generally happy during this time of year. We get to watch Christmas movies of people giving. Christmas movies where miracles happen that we can't always explain. That's God speaking to us right now. He is speaking to us right now. Do we hear it? Are we open to seeing it and hearing it? And what is God telling you this morning? So to close, we all need to remember the importance of God speaking to us. God speaks to us at the right time, and that time, folks, is now. Jesus Christ is born, and this is a time to recognize it and thank God for loving the world so much that he sent us his one and only son. Let us all remember this important peace during this Advent season. May God continue to bless each one of you as you reflect on Luke chapter 2 and reflect on the Christmas story. Amen. Will you please join with me in the Apostles' Creed, the affirmation of our faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for virtual worship. I hope that you were able to feel connected with God during this Advent season. And remember, 
no matter how odd our lives may seem in 2020, God is still God. God is still here. God is still good. Receive the benediction. And now as you go, may Christ be the light into the path that you walk. May the Holy Spirit continue to live and work inside of all of you. And may we all remember to look for you at work. And let us all open up our ears to listen to you speaking during this Advent season. Go now, go in peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God be with you as you go.